What is up guys? You've caught me on a day here. I'm enjoying myself in the studio, playing around with the various upgrades that I've made and just having a little bit of an enjoyment. Um, I'm not doing anything groundbreaking, I'm not writing a track, I'm not recording a track, although it will be very soon, very soon. I do promise, um, I, keep, I keep promising people that I'm going to write a track really soon because it's been a long time and I am extremely motivated to do so. But in today's video, um, and I have a feeling this video is going to be late, so I'm really sorry if it is late guys. This should be Friday's video, but it's probably going to be Saturday or Sunday upload, maybe even Monday. Uh, hopefully not Monday though, because I've been having some real difficulties, but all that will be explained in the future. Anyway, um, I've been doing a lot of home studio coverage, as you guys know, but one thing that I haven't touched on in a while is the heart and soul of the system, and the thing that you guys are probably the most interested in, uh, the majority of you anyway, and that is this guy down here. This is the single 1.8 gigahertz Power Mac G5, the little bit of an oddball model that I'll talk uh, more about later. So I'm going to make a video about the G5 for a few different reasons. Um, other than the unboxing video and the memory upgrade and the graphics card upgrade, I never really sat down and spoke about the G5 and how it performed for me. And the G5, even though I haven't been using the studio continuously for the last year, because I've had this roughly a year now it feels like, I think it is either March or April of 2014 me and James unboxed it, even I haven't used it loads it's still done quite a lot for me um, so I want to show you guys maybe some benchmarks and just show you me using it a little bit in this video and also I want to talk a little bit about it or talk quite a lot about how the G5 has been because it's getting to the point now where it is too difficult to use it um, and I, I that'll that would be really easy to explain not only is is it because of support and power PC but because of the, the general slow nature of a single processor G5. I do not regret buying it. It was a brilliant machine for that time, but it's amazing how much I've come along in a year and how much I need an upgrade. So an answer to the big question, yes, I really hope the Mac Pro will be coming up here. I really do, once the Hackintosh is built. We will see. Um, but I'm going to go and grab my, Mac, uh, my MacBook Pro because I need some files and whatnot. I'm going to take off this shirt because I'm absolutely boiling. I'm going to roll the intro for you, you guys and we're going to take a look at this Power Mac and I'm going to show you a little bit more of what it can do. So before we get started with anything important, I thought I, if I was doing an overview of how this G5 performs, I should really do a shutdown and startup test, um, just to show you guys really. Um, it's no slouch, and it's got no SSD in it obviously, um, because I would have definitely made a video about that if I put an SSD in here. Um, it's quite possible to put an SSD in a G5, but you can't take full advantage of one, because it's SATA Revision 1, but at least it's SATA, so it's a lot easier to put an SSD in one of these than it is in something like a G4. So I've got the stopwatch queued up. Let's see how long it takes to shut down. So three, two, one, go. So there we go, literally. I couldn't stop the stopwatch in time. That was about four seconds, guys. Um, I heard the machine click off. So I'm gonna reset the stopwatch and we're gonna boot up the machine. So three, two, one, go. Now, boot up and shutdown time isn't really that important. In fact, it's not important at all. And this thing has got a hard drive in it. So of course, it takes a little while to start up compared to some of my newer machines. Um, but every other machine that I use a lot has got an SSD in it. Um, you know, I've even put an SSD in my Power Mac G3, as you guys know, there was an SSD in my G4. This hasn't got an SSD and it really goes to show. Um, but there we go, we're at white screen and that took just under 30 seconds to get to the white screen um, with the Apple logo and the spinning thing. But we will speed this up now and I'll see how long it takes. So we're at a blue screen and I'm going to do it when the dock and menu bar appears. Simple as, you guys know the score. We have a menu bar, come on. Menu bar. Alright, I think it's that. My dock is shown to hide. Ooh, I'm pressing lap accidentally. Okay guys, so you can pretty much call that um, 
Is my dock hidden? Yeah, my dock is hidden. You can pretty much call that about a minute startup, which is not too bad at all. So, because the G5 is on a separate circuit to all the audio gear and stuff, what I tend to do, as soon as I walk in the room, I, I press the power button on the G5, that starts booting up, and by the time I've powered up the rack and the desk and got myself sorted, and you know, I'm, I'm normally doing something else when I'm up here, so if I want to set up a pair of headphones or start tuning up a guitar or something, by the time I've done all that, the G5 is raring to go. Um, so as you can see, we're sitting at the desktop, and this is Mac OS 10.5 Leopard. So I'm going to zoom a little bit into the screen so you guys can see a bit closer. And I'm just going to show you over the specs and about this Mac, just so you guys can familiarise yourselves. So let's take a really quick look. I'm not sure how much you guys can see, but I'll zoom in anyway. So about this Mac, and uh, there was a time on this YouTube channel, you know, when I started doing all the PowerPC stuff back in 2009, 2010, there was a time where Leopard really didn't feel that old, but now, man, Leopard does feel pretty old. So as you guys can see, it's running macOS 10.5.8 Leopard, which is the newest version of Leopard, of course, all software updated. Coming down, this is a 1.8 gigahertz PowerPC G5 system. No dual there, it's a single, and it has four gigabytes of DDR SD RAM. Now, this was an interesting model, like I mentioned, guys, because uh, normally they were dual 1.8 gigahertz machines, dual two gigahertz machines. Now, this was a cheaper alternative to the 2004 machines, and it actually uses a different motherboard. This motherboard only has four RAM slots versus the usual eight that you'd find in the G5. It's a very, very cut back, cheapo model, and um, because of this, you can only put 4 gigs of RAM in it versus the 8 gigabytes that you can put in most G5s. Uh, unless you've got one of the nice snazzy 2005 ones that take 16 gig. Um, and, you know, there are other couple of limitations. Of course, the CPU is a single 1.8 gigahertz. Now, um, previously you could get a single 1.6 gigahertz, but that is a different model of Power Mac. This one is out there on its own. And um, from what I can tell, it's quite a rarity. I haven't really seen one on eBay. Um, but just as a warning, guys, they are, they are quite different. The internals are quite different to the previous single processor G5s. Um, it uses a giant heatsink. Um, cover just like the uh, G5 2005s, you know the quad and all that. Um, instead of the the one smaller heatsink cover, but yeah, it's an interesting beast. Let's take a look in more information just so I can show you the graphics card. Now I had to upgrade the graphics card from the FX 5200 Ultra because I'm running two displays and it was really sluggish. So this actually has a Radeon 9600 XT in it, 128 megs. Fanless card. This is probably the most ideal card to put in an AGP um, Power Mac G5 if you want it to be optimized for silence and decent video performance. Although there are much better cards that you can put in there if you want graphical performance. Um, you know, but I just care about smooth video really. And it, when I was running the FX5200, it didn't cope with the metering on screen at all. Um, it would lag quite a bit with the with the interface. But now with this card, I can see you know 20, 30 channels all with their meters uh, responding properly to the track. So that is uh, of course necessary and well needed. Uh, the hard drive in this is a pretty much brand new Western Digital Caviar Blue 500 gigabytes. So it's a bare basic SATA hard drive, nothing flashy, but it's no old slouch from back in the day. The 80 gigabyte uh, Apple branded Seagate drive that came with this, I believe, was definitely toast. And also I changed the optical drive in this, guys. Uh, I changed most stuff in this, I think, really. Um, if we just go in and have a look at the optical drive, I've got a DVR-105, and uh, I believe I changed this out with uh, the old optical drive from my MDD, because I have a new drive in the MDD, so a Pioneer DVR-105 is a very reliable, uh, decent IDE burner, so very nice. So that is the specifications of the machine then, guys, and uh, as you can probably tell by today's standards, it's a little old, and it is completely shocking that I still run this in the studio. But one thing I'm going to do now is download Geekbench, and we're going to run Geekbench on this G5 because then I can put it up against some of my other machines that I have and it'll be very interesting to see what this gets. You're talking um, anything over a thousand can be considered usable for for some things but I know there are G5s out there that score less than a thousand 
um, which is intriguing to me because I come from a world of MDDs. I love the dual 1.42 gigahertz MDD, and you can get easily 1,200 out of one of those. Um, and also 1.25 gigahertz MDDs, the dual processor ones, very, very good. There was a lot of improvements about the G5, you know, especially the case design and the ports and the SATA drives, and the, it could cope with much more memory, you know, 8 gig standard. There's much more improvements uh, with the G5 over the G4, but it's amazing how quick the G4s still are compared to some of these lower end G5s. So, I have had loads of requests to compare my MDD to the G5, and I would like to do that, but I'm doing this video first for a little bit of groundwork. So, let's get Geekbench up and running and see what we score. So guys, we have Geekbench 2.2.7, which I believe is the last version of Geekbench 2 that runs on PowerPC. Not entirely sure though, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Um, so, of course, I'm not going to pay for the damn thing. Um, so I'll have to run the 32-bit version. And if anyone's wondering, this is a Power Mac 9.1 because I, I failed to mention that one. So we're going to run the benchmarks and I am truly intrigued to see what this gets because even though I may have read what it, is it, what it is meant to get average on Mac Tracker or something before, I've never actually done the test myself. So it'll be very interesting to see what it gets. And of course, naturally, it's going to take a little while on a slow machine like this. So I'm going to pause the camera and then we'll see what it gets. So we've just come to the end and we have an intriguing score, guys. This is a score of 888, okay? Now, when it comes down to, would I recommend buying one of these single G5s? It depends on the application, but if noise isn't a big deal to you, then man, I would say every single time go for an MDD, because 888 and the size and weight of this thing, um, pretty bonkers. Now just as a perspective guys, this is kind of, um, it's really, really not, not that much quicker than uh, a single 933 megahertz uh, Power Mac G4 Quicksilver or something like that. And then just a dual, a dual 1.25 gigahertz MDD is, is so much faster than this. They, they'll all be in four figures pretty much. Um, so 888, it really, really goes to show. Now, Geekbench isn't everything, guys. As you guys know, Geekbench is not everything. Um, one, one thing I will say about this G5 is it never, never ramps up. I mean, obviously Geekbench tests stuff quite hard, or it's meant to, and it doesn't ramp up hardly at all in terms of fan speed, so it doesn't get loud, whereas something like an MDD, you can really hear it crunching the data, if you know what I mean. But if you're happy to do some modifications with fans and stuff, then you can get those pretty damn quiet as well. So, that was Geekbench, 888. Absolutely intriguing. But, how does that translate in real life? Now, one of the main things I use this system for is input and output for MIDI. So, what do I mean? Well, I guess input f uh, from MIDI and then output from audio. Um, I have an 88 key MIDI controller it doesn't have any built-in sounds, it's not a keyboard, it's a plain and simple MIDI controller. If I open Logic 8 and I load a simple piano, how well can the G5 output my sound? How fast can it crunch those MIDI numbers that are going in? Do I have any latency when I play music? Let's take a little look. So guys, I have a piano in my house, but um, it is a little out of tune, it's a little old, I love it to pieces and I love playing it but it only suits a certain genre of music, sort of honky tonk bluesy stuff because of uh, its various tuning things and that. It's a great piano to play and it's settled within itself quite nicely but if I ever want to get some proper legitimate in tune perfect piano practice happening my only option is my keyboard. I spent a lot of money on this thing, this is a very nice uh, it's a CME keyboard, I think it's a key, I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's an 88 key, full full length, weighted key MIDI controller. Um, but of course it's a MIDI controller, so all of the processing is done in the computer. This just sends numbers. So if I play a C chord... I've selected a software piano in Logic, and that's how you're hearing the piano. Um, you know, 
I'm a massive fan of MIDI controllers versus keyboards because it gives you so much versatility. But there are, there are a lot of hybrid things these days, actual keyboards that can output MIDI data as well. But in terms of latency, you'd think benchmark of 888. And I'm using a fairly decent complex piano sound in Logic. Well, for the time of Logic 8 anyway, there's a lot better available now. And that's something I'll touch on later actually, is the, the plugins that I can't use with this computer. But latency, <laughs> As soon as I hit the chord, I can hear the chord, and it is perfect. Okay, basic. But what if I get quicker and try and be more snazzy with my stuff? So, um... So yeah, really rough, but um, as you can see, it copes with really, really quick input. And also, as many notes as you can throw at it, let us turn up a little bit so we can, we can hear what's going on. Piano practice, um, the G5 is great, and there may be some latency. There's obviously a certain amount of latency in terms of milliseconds, but I can't notice it. But one thing that I like to do, especially on this computer, because I haven't settled on a piano sound that I absolutely love yet, built into Logic, and I've never devoted the time to finding a decent compatible download. Um, if I want to move through different sounds, if I press the down arrow on the on the computer, it takes a little while to actually scroll between the pianos. Okay, as you can hear, ah, it's actually come up. So it takes a little bit of time to, to show me, to, so I can hear different pianos and actually play. And play with different pianos. Also, this is a good example. With some sounds. For some reason, just on this computer, it does have a couple of problems. Not sure if that's because of the speed of the G5, but this is piano practice, guys. In terms of piano practice, I fire up Logic, I press piano, and I go for it. I can hear myself, and I can practice, so it's, it's ideal. Loading more complicated sounds, synthesizers, electric pianos and stuff can take a lot longer. But that is pretty much all I use the G5 for on a day-to-day -day basis is playing this keyboard at the moment. Um, and even though it does a great job, as you guys can probably tell, I hit a note and it comes out of the speakers instantly, which is obviously what you want as a pianist. Um, when it comes to making a track, it's a little bit of a different story. So the questions that people ask, is this good for a Studio Mac? Is that good for a Studio Mac? It really depends what you use your studio for. Now, what is a studio? Now, I call this space a studio, but what is it really? It's me in an awesome room that my parents have provided me. I'm lucky enough to be able to have two rooms. I've filled it with a load of cool audio gear that I like. I've bunged it all together and I call it a studio. Now, if I was to walk down the street with this G5 and drop it into a work 
working studio that's down the road that gets clients in, multiple bands, solo artists, duos, all sorts of different things, even choirs, um, on a, a really regular basis, this G5 would not be able to cope because time is money. Time isn't money for me. I do this for enjoyment. And if time was money in terms of the, my studio stuff, then I'd need a speedy machine, just like how I need a speedy machine to pump out these YouTube videos because the YouTube videos, time is money there. So it's a very different scenario. I come up here for a slow, chilled out time, but that doesn't mean I love having a slow computer because, yep, this G5 is a little slow. So when you're talking studio, a minute ago when I was playing the piano, we're talking MIDI. Now, depending on how certain software and programs and how you use MIDI, it can be very complex, but generally it's very simple. So for the, for the computer to be able to process these sounds and everything, Everything is absolutely fine. It's easy. It's having a breeze, I guess, because it's performing fine and it doesn't rattle up a load of CPU. Uh, but when I make a, a multi-track with a load of different MIDI instruments, loads of effects, plugins, that kind of thing, the system slows down. And something, something that you need when you write songs and you create music is a system that is going to keep up with you. Now, I've written music and stuff on an MDD, and I've had a more pleasant time doing so with a dual 1.25 gigahertz MDD. I had an MDD in this room, and I wrote um, a famous song of mine called Compo in F, and it's always been known as Compo in F. Um, I did that on an MDD in GarageBand, and yes, GarageBand is a lighter weight program, blah, 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 but it coped a lot better than this G5 does with lots and lots of MIDI instruments and playing. Um, playing along at the same time as maybe playing to 10 tracks of yourself playing a different MIDI instrument, all with their independent effects, all with their independent delay times, EQs, compressors, that kind of thing. Um, so I w I, I'm very much looking forward to doing a direct comparison between this and my MDD, but my MDD, my dual 1.42 gigahertz MDD absolutely smokes this G5, and I know that for a fact. Now, working with audio, for some strange reason, it's a different kettle of fish. I made quite a large audio project. I made two projects. I recorded two songs with my band that I used to be in, in this studio, with this machine. And do you want to know something, guys? It did not skip a beat. It wasn't the fastest thing at adding EQs. It wasn't the fastest this. It wasn't the fastest that. But man, it did it. It crunched through it. And do you know what? People were making tracks on systems of this specification not too long ago. Loads of your favourite tracks and albums were made on machines like this, and machines worse than this. You know, a lot more was done outside of the box back then. We expect to be able to do everything in the box these days. And by that, I mean, you know, all of your processing, all of your effects, all of your EQ is done inside the computer. The more you shove on an outboard rack, the less the computer has got to do. Um, but this is definitely, definitely past its time because of how we expect things. As users, as musicians, as creative people, we expect a lot more from our computers these days because things have moved on, times have really moved on, times have moved on past this thing about 10 years. Um, because it was a slouch when it was out, really, the proper dual 2 gigahertz and dual 2.3 gigahertz G5s were fast. But they're a lot, lot faster than this machine. Um, much faster, they're, you know, two, three times the speed. So this really is just a cheaper alternative slouch. Now guys, this whole video is beginning to sound a little bit like, you know, the whole thing is slagging off this G5. It's not. I have a massively, massive soft spot in my heart for G5s. And I absolutely love them. And if I could keep one in the studio, then I would. You may be thinking, okay, Tom, you're primarily focusing on just speed. If you're talking about the speed of the system, why not put a quad G5 up here and it'll never, you know, it'll never slow down. It'll never let you down. And that's true. A quad G5 would definitely be a machine that is totally quick enough for the things that I do up here. I could even write a track and be totally smooth and comfortable using both my displays and everything it could be great, it could be relaxing. I wouldn't notice the computer. The computer's doing its job when you don't have to think about the speed of the computer. That's when it's quick enough. And I know a G5 quad would give me that. But one thing it wouldn't give me is support. And software support is something that I really need. I am desperate to try out Logic Pro 10. 
It looks great, it looks intriguing. I'm using Logic 8, which is essentially the same as Logic 9. I used Logic 9 extensively when I was in college, and I would really like to move with the times and try Logic 10. So for that, I need an Intel Mac. That's one big thing, but also I do own a few plugins that I used back in the college days when I had my 17 inch MacBook Pro um, that I used to use up here also. I do have a few Intel only plugins and various little things that I used to use on Intel that doesn't work on PowerPC. So I do have, other than a couple of little additional things, I do have pretty much just Logic installed and that is pretty much it. Luckily it works with my Blackbird. I'm not sure if a Blackbird works with G4s, but I think it may do. Um, I know it doesn't work with Tiger, you've got to have Leopard, and of course that's another thing. The general operating system is too slow. Um, I don't use the internet on this machine at all, one bit. Um, but it would be handy for you know things like SoundCloud and YouTube and that kind of thing. Um, or maybe a any kind of online reference. If I need a little bit of help with something, just Googling it, you know, I need my MacBook Pro up here with me when I'm using the G5, because the G5 does not go online at all. Of course it has the capability to go online, it's got airport and it could connect, connect just fine, or I could even connect it to a power line adapter or whatever and get online. But I don't do that because there's no point. I've got 10.4 Fox installed and it's still a slug when browsing. If you have a browser and logic open at the same time, it's time to sit back, relax, and uh, maybe go and, I don't know, do something else because it's going to be a total snail while trying to trawl through all of the tasks you throw at it. So again, bringing up more negative points about the G5, and there's a lot I could say about it, guys, but as you can probably tell by now, the bottom line is the G5 is not a powerhouse speedy machine. But one thing that it does for me at the moment is it allows me to practice my piano, and that is the main thing I use this space for. And also, it allows me to listen to music. It will play back very high quality audio files of course because you don't need a lot of processing power for that and I can sit here and listen to my music which is something that I often do as well and something I should do a lot more because these are very nice sounding speakers and it's probably the nicest sounding audio setup well it definitely is the nicest sounding audio setup that I've got in the entire house, so I want to utilize that more. So the main reason I'm looking to upgrade is to write a track. I want to get writing, and I want to get composing, and I want to get y using this space and utilizing it to the best of my abilities while I still have it. Um, because, as I keep mentioning, it may not be here forever. You can't rely on something being here forever in life, and I would never want to look back and go, God, Tom, you had an awesome studio, what the hell happened? Um, I want this to be memorable and I want to take at least one track out of here that I remember because I'm proud of the band recordings that I did but everything ended quite sourly in that band so I'm not proud of a lot of things from the history of that so that in turn uh, makes me not so proud of the recordings that I did and, uh, and I'd like to take away my own track that I composed from here that just sounds absolutely marvellous um, I don't know what's going to come of it, but I do want a machine upgrade first because I really want to enjoy it. And let's face it, guys, I am spoiled by using fast machines. I have a Retina MacBook Pro and I have a Mac Pro 8 core, so I am spoiled by using fast machines. Um, but this G5, it's been great. This is probably the last video that you'll see it starring in um, when it's actually in use. I will keep the machine knocking about. If I do end up putting the Mac Pro up here, which I really want to do, um, the, the G5 will stay kicking about for a little while just so I can do sort of G5 versus MDD videos which a lot of people have requested and maybe a couple of other things if I think of anything. So guys, that is pretty much that. I know this video has been full of ranting but hopefully it gives you a slightly clearer idea as to what the G5 can and cannot do up here. We haven't delved into massive detail in terms of logic and running plugins and running this and running that and I would love to launch up a project to show you guys the areas of slowdown but to be perfectly honest the projects that I can open I would not like to because it goes back to the band as well. They are the, they are the big monster multi-track projects that I have on this system. Um, so maybe, maybe, maybe we'll download a multi-track in the future, but it's all it's all hard with copyright and that. Until I until I write my own track, I can't really delve into how it performs in Logic. But hopefully, I've given you guys some kind of understanding, and hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this video. It's one for the computer guys to sort of blend into the studio. If you're a computer guy and you're not interested in the studio stuff, hopefully, this has been a nice sort of merging blend. 
So again, massive apologies for the late video, guys. Um, lots of things are here, there, and everywhere at the moment, up in the air. But, you know, life's cool, and it's all good. So, huge thank you for watching, and of course, I will see you on Monday's video.